it's Sunday brew day. So, a week since I made this, it's completely fermented out. And what do I got in here? An empty keg. So I've got to clean this. And guess where that beer's going? Right in there. I'm going to get my old stainless pot here and get a brew. So here's the lineup. Uh, so half will go into the keg for priming. Uh, that car stand that I have left from last week. Some grains in a bag and three, six, nine pounds of LME to make this a strong beer. So we're gonna get so the water's in the pot. No gas on yet. Now the grains into my big hot strainer again. And then, as you can hear, turned it on. I guess we'll do the ladle. That's what I have. Just gonna mix that up. And again, it's gonna let it sit until it hits 168. Empty it out. So it's time to pull out the grains according to my little thermometer here and I shall get a bowl. Let that stuff drain out. I don't know, you just uh, put the LME now and then bring it up to a boil. I might do that. So let's see. Okay, so without gas is off, it's close enough to a boil for me. So I'm gonna stir in this LME. And I'm sure speed this up. And as this is coming up to a boil, I almost forgot to throw that little bit of dextrose in. I already have the priming sugar made for the keg. So I stir that. I've had the lid on it to kind of have it boil quicker. And I haven't decided what hops I'm putting in yet, but I'm sure I'll use some of my homegrown hollow tar because I have so much just to bitter it. And then I might just hop the crap out of this beer. Why not? It's the only way to make an extract beer really taste good. Tell the first hopping. As you can see, there's some hop action. I just opened that bag and wow, they smell good. Those are my homegrown hollow tire hops that I've... Just to show you, this compressed so well in the vacuum sealer, it's like a giant hop plug. This is three ounces, so I'm not putting all of this in, but I'll put about half. For pre so I'm putting in my hop strainer. It's almost at a boil. And I'm going to go through all my hops. I 
kind of made a bit of a hop key just to break up the plug because I don't have a huge amount of volume in here. There we go, this first hop edition. Home room hollow tire. You can see they're in there. I'm calling that a boil and calling it a 35 minute boil. And I think I'm going to be throwing in the rest of that uh, hollow tar homegrown and then some centennials at the end to make this a hoppy. And with 25 minutes in the boil, adding the rest of those uh, hollow tar hops. Done. Get my spoon and push them down. And meet all that boiling wort. Just to jam this little pot up, I'm adding this little guy because I'm going to put all the centennial hops in there so they can stay when it cools down. So you see what the scale says there three ounces. There's three ounces of centennial hops that I'll be adding in from maybe 10 minutes left or 5 to Whirlpool and that's what's going in. To so with 10 minutes left in the boil I'm just going to add a random amount of centennial hops here till the next hop drop and 5 minutes left so add a little bit more of that centennial keep the rest for I guess when I actually cool it down Flame out whirlpool hops. Counting down to flame out, just seconds away. I'm gonna shut the gas off. Empty, uh, well, at least lift those leaf hops out of the big uh, hop strainer. So I got the lid like that. Did you hear that? Just to get sanitized from the steam, because we'll be covering it again. So I'm just gonna pull this out and have it drain for a while. So. Lots of hops. Into the sink of cold water. Stir this. As I grab the camera. I guess. Good enough. So, the last remaining amount of hops in there for the whirlpool. Okay, make sure they all get saturated. Try and clean off that. Smells pretty good. Good enough. Now I will add my frozen water bottles I have my keg and auto safe and sanitizing downstairs keeping this covered the keg down enough I took out the hops there and now this is going to go downstairs onto that yeast cake. So as you see there, that's the beer I just kegged, that caribou slobber-ish beer. And that's the one I kegged from before, the week before that. So it's probably carbonated. So here's the pot. There's my carboy. Uh, let's go like that. You can see me. So. First step, this uh, funnel has already been sanitized, so that's why I was transferring star sand through. There's some cold water in the fridge. Might have to top up some more from the city, let's see, but I'm going to pour this 
Yeah, maybe not. Not gonna pour it in that. It's already a little too full. Okay, so star sand will be ready to go in. Sorry. There's a bit of star sand foam in the funnel, that's why. Here goes this. Slow and steady. Centennial LME, this is going to be a good name for it. We call it San LME for the Holotar, but. Getting hot wearing this thing now. It was a lot cooler this morning and slightly warmed up. See if there's any scum. You know I had all the hops pretty much in those baskets. I had a little bit at the end there. I'll save back. And now we'll see if this water will do it. If not, I'll go fill up more. This is just really cool. Oh, so close. Technically, I need this funnel. Excuse me. I do have a carbon filter on there, so it is taking all the chlorine out. Just a little bit more. Now that should fill the keg. Cap this off. Mix this up some more. Number one, it's already pretty aerated, but this will additionally aerate it, but it'll make sure all the the yeast, the wort, and the water I put in all becomes one until the yeast starts settling out and fermenting. Hope I got this one a little warmer, but so this yeast can apparently take it, take up to 30 degrees Celsius or something, which has been getting fermented at about 23-ish, 4 sometimes, depending on how much the basement cools down at night. But I have it in front of my dehumidifier that is always pumping out heat. And it pulls water out of the air. Just get until I don't need to use it soon. So I'll say that's uh, mixed up. Put my airlock that has some star sand in it. Pick this bad boy up. Don't hit the camera. And there we go. I can't see. I think we're on the higher end here, but I'll see how long it takes to uh, actually start fermenting. Like I said, this one is a bit warmer than before, so it's 321 now. I'll check back. So with less than 20 minutes since I brewed this, let's see that airlock. It's moving pretty quickly, actually. So. I'll give another quick update when the cry zone's a little higher or something like that, but wow. This literally is one hour since I just poured that beer on top of it, and it's going crazy, as you see in the airlock. On top of that, you can see the cry zone has built up, and the activity, which I guess the light's not good, it's moving really quick.
There you go. Much better view now. Look at that. That's craziness.